So you want to unlock the power of your mind. Did you know that the average person has 6,000 thoughts a day, with 75% of those thoughts being negative? What if I told you that it's not actually the negative thoughts that's keeping you stuck, it's your response to them? In this video, I'm going to provide a new response to your thoughts called cognitive diffusion. Cognitive diffusion is the process of getting distance from our thoughts so they don't influence our behavior. At least they don't influence our behavior automatically. We can make a choice about whether we want to listen to the information our mind is providing. One of the things that's keeping us stuck is advice from the mainstream media and from popular psychology. Contrary to popular belief, you can't control your thoughts. Don't think about a pink kangaroo. Let's try it. Don't think about a pink kangaroo and tell me what hops into your mind. Challenging our negative thoughts is counterproductive. We give our thoughts extra energy when we try and fight them or control them or push them away. And although sometimes fighting our thoughts in the short term will give us some relief, in the long term, it's not a way to give us a rich and full life. If we look at this from the evolutionary perspective, our ancestors needed automatic responses to survive. This is how we got the negative leaning bias for our brain to be always leaning a little bit more towards negative thinking. Our ancestors who had possibly a more positive lean in their thinking and the way that they thought about the world were selected out of the gene pool, probably by being eaten by a pink and or some sort of creature from our ancestral history. Either way, they no longer exist. So what does this mean for me? We no longer have to run from pink kangaroos or lions or predators on average. Most people don't have to. But stress turns up in multiple areas and our body doesn't know the difference between physical stress, chemical stress or emotional stress. So we're having stress from life, challenge, things of importance that we want to pursue. We can still get this leaning approach of our brain wanting to think negatively. Negative thoughts then are a natural part of pursuing things that are important to us and they'll just keep showing up. But if we try and control them, that's when we start to have issues in our life. So what I would say to you is that it's not actually the negative thoughts that, that are the issue. They are a natural evolutionary response to keep us safe. The actual problem and issue is our response to these negative thoughts. Do we stack things on top of each other when we look at our thoughts and think, I don't want that thought, am I gonna control it? Having done a bit of research for this video, I've looked around and seen some of the other approaches, which is like manifesting, think positive, control your thoughts. This is, again, bringing up that pink kangaroo. It's bringing up this, don't think about this and giving energy to this area of our lives. And maybe it gives some short term relief, but the efficiency of this is they'll tell you, you just haven't done it enough. You just need to practice more. You need to get into more reps. And this may be true for some people. If it works for you, keep doing it. But I'd say on average, most people are not going to be able to get to a point where they can control and push and separate their thoughts. The best approach for most of us, which has been my experience and the people I work with, is not giving a thought energy. It's the same as when you break up with someone. Whether you treat them well and you like you try and win them back or you treat them bad, you're giving them energy. The best way to approach a breakup is to give them no information at all, none of your energy and just move on and cut ties and, and, and be an independent person again. It's the same thing with your mind. If you give it, if you bring in negative energy, it increases the connections of that negative response in the brain. So you actually think of that and connect it out. The way to diminish a negative thought in the brain is to give it no energy so that it's not increasing. Your brain's saying, this is not important. And it does this through having the thought and then uncoupling the response. So if you continue to have a thought and then try and push it away, it says, there must be something in that. Why isn't he willing to integrate and utilize this information that we're providing? This is the brain, by the way, talking to us. If we were able to have the thought, then continue to do the action, it says, this information is no longer as important. I'm giving him this information, but he's still doing it anyway. It must mean that that fear isn't essential in this turning up. And this will happen in your sales presentations. This will happen in the work you do in a relationship, in pursuing anything in business. Everything meaningful is going to have these challenging thoughts that come with them. And if we're constantly, like, can you imagine how exhausting it is for these people who talk about manifesting, constantly having a thought with anything new, which is biologically how our brain will show up with negative thoughts or preparing us for, for danger, trying to argue and manifest and change and control. And I'm just exhausting talking about it. The best way to approach this is to say, I notice that thought and then unhook from it. And that's where we use diffusion. Diffusion is a skill that we can use to say, this information isn't helpful. I'm going to diffuse from it. And then I'm going to choose my direction. And that's where we take valued action. So we take action knowing our reasons why. So if you want to learn some of the skills for diffusion, let's have a crack at a couple now. Most people I talk to are on autopilot with thinking to a certain level. Some people have amazing introspection where they're able to notice their thoughts, allow them to come and go. But on average, I would say most people need a little bit more internal view of their mind, a little bit of mind sight. So one of the things I recommend for most people is grab a notebook. So you might grab a notebook, 
You might write down, I just had the thought that I'm useless. I'm bored. I just had the thought that I'm no good at this. Whatever the thought is for you. As you do something, you just keep noting, you'll put a little tally next to that thought and you just put a mark each time in every different version of that thought that shows up. We're just trying to raise the awareness level of our thinking and our thoughts and when they show up and why they're showing up. There's not a, like a, a big process to this. It's just mark it down, move on. If we listen to Dan Siegel's work in neuroscience, he says that it can reduce the impact of emotions by labeling them up to 50%. And I believe there's some bleed for that over into thinking as well. Labeling your thoughts is also a great way to make space for them. So if you're someone who's finding, hey, I'm getting hooked by these thoughts, they're pulling me into a direction I'm not happy with or isn't helpful or pause the word happy, isn't helpful, then we can use diffusion to make space for that thought and then continue to do the things we want. So step one, observe, break the automatic pilot. Thought labeling is the second step. A lot of people find this useful. I've found that I don't always do this, this version, but for some people it's great. The example that's given in a lot of times in the literature and in the practices that people use is like giving a name to your patterns of thinking, like here's radio doom and gloom, here's the negativity machine, here's the self-critic, inner critic. I even have a few clients who like to use different versions of themselves and one of them is quite critical. Whatever it is to give you some space, that's the idea of this. Noticing that it's an aspect of your own awareness, that it's separate, that you aren't controlled by it. It's not like a rule that you need to follow. So giving yourself space is a great way to do this. That might be giving it a story, giving it a label, whatever it is, giving it an aspect to this part of you. I don't always use this one. From my experience, I've found that if I label it for myself, sometimes I can feel like I'm labeling me. So I don't like this over-identification. But for a lot of the people, I say, if that works for you, go for it. You might even label the story. And one of the examples for labeling a story would be, I have an, a story that's quite common for me, which is the I'm not good enough story, which is, I why do you keep making these mistakes? Why, do you, why are you so hopeless at this? You never learn your lessons. That's what my thought patterns might show up. But I, the way I would label that, and rather than separate thoughts, is it's all versions of I'm the good enough story. The reason I haven't sat well with this one is because I feel like it's a little bit not self-compassionate. It's a, it's not kind to myself to, to describe it like this. It's a little bit um, patronizing for me. So for you, if it fits, have a try. Not every tool is going to work for everyone. So play it out. The last one I use for most people is going to be a voice changer. So there's an app which I'll put up on the screen, which you can use from your iPhone or Android or whatever else. And all you do is you want to repeat the thought out loud, hear it in the app, and then change the voice so that it hear it in different versions. What we're finding is there's a thing called relational frames. So if I say to you tree, you don't just hear tree, you hear like all of the information that comes with tree. So it might be green leaves, it might be root systems, it might be you know bark, all these things come with the word tree. When I say, when your mind says to you, you're not good enough, it's not just saying you're not good enough, it's saying, remember all these times you weren't good enough, remember all this other information. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give you space from this assessment of your mind of what you are and the hookingness that comes with that. So that's what diffusion really is. So with a voice changer, what we might do is we might have a thought like, you're not good enough. Why are you hopeless at this? What's wrong with you? And we'll play that thought out and then record it in the voice changer and the voice changer might play back and play it in R2D2. It might play it in Darth Vader. It might play it out in Arnold Schwarzenegger. Whatever it is, I find some of these hilarious to, to play with. So then we play the thought back out and it creates space. We're able to notice this thought is not exactly as it's, it's, it's playing out to. It's not a mental instruction. It's just a thought. It's just a chemical process, information from your brain, biologically, again, trying to keep us safe, but not a rule. It's not. It's just information. So we can play that out. That one, the thought changer, the, the voice changer is a great tool that I use with a lot of people. The other one, if you don't want to use it in public, is the Titchener's repetition, which is if you've ever seen, if you've ever been a, when you're a kid saying the word elbow, and you might say elbow, 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 and you keep saying it over and over again, and all of a sudden it sounds like, what is this word? It's like just a bunch of sounds in my mouth. Words, again, are just information that we've put meaning onto. And so you can use that technique even with the repetitive thought, especially if it's like, you're hopeless, 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 hopeless. It's, it's taking the frame around that information and removing it. As you can tell, mainstream media and popular psychology have got it wrong, really. They're really fighting a battle of against biology, against evolution. And people are trying to tell you not to do it the way that we're meant to do it. And the science is starting to catch up. The science is catching up. The experience is there. This is the way I've learned it myself. I've been able to use it with people I've worked with. It just makes logical sense that the brain doesn't want you to delete information or try and replace it with thought games. The way we actually do it is we just allow. As long as we can just allow that to be there and then do the thing we need to do, the thoughts start to diminish over time without us actually actively having to diminish them. So this is where we are. 
We've got some tools that you can utilize. You can start to build diffusion as a skill. And the end goal is that you start to move towards more of your objectives and goals and you build a life where you're taking more valued action. Thoughts have been a huge issue in my life. I remember at one point just shaking away thoughts and being like, oh, I've got to get rid of this. But now I'm like, that's a thought. It doesn't matter if it's true or false. It's, is it unhelpful? And I diffuse from it and I make space and I take more value in action. If you want more tips on value in action, follow my YouTube channel. See you in the next video.